हमारे लेटेस्ट वीडियो देखने के लिए प्रेस करें बेल आइकन स्वागत आपका डायरेक्ट दिल से विद द मोबाइल इंडियन और आज हम इस इंट्रैक्शन में आप की बात करवाने वाले हैं डेविड कू जो चीफ फाइनेंशियल ऑफिसर हैं मीडिया टेक के इनसे हमारा जो इंटरव्यू होगा वो इंग्लिश में होगा डेविड वेलकम द शो लवली हैविंग यू ग्रेट सो प्लेजर सो डेविड यू हैव टू डे लॉन्च पी नाइनटी अनवील पी नाइनटी वॉट सो ग्रेट अबाउट इट Well, I think for the P90, the key is truly is we come out with some idea about the whole new architecture idea we call the APU. I think traditionally people may be familiar about you know, the CPU architecture, the GPU architecture, but now actually it's a new leg of a processing unit which is called the APU. Uh, it's a lot of detail over there, but I mean, it simply is for people out, out there trying to understand the overall structure is why we call the APU because we do believe that, that going forward, right, APU will be as important as CPU and GPU. Okay. Great. So here the main question comes like there are already okay. If you look at the overall picture, there are uh, Qualcomm is there. Yep. We have got uh, Kirin from Huawei. Right. All of those people have already worked a lot on the AI, and you are now banking on AI. So how is P90 going to make a difference? Well, well first of all, AI is the trend. So I'm sure, just like you say, everyone is working on that. But we do believe with the P90 coming out. We are the leader in the AI era, or in the AI space. I'm sure actually is that you actually have a time to check out the demo room today. A lot of new features. I think more importantly, AI for us is not just a, a fancy term. It's really we put that into work. You see so many useful function features. As a user, we can benefit from that. So we do believe uh, the A is architectures, B is the user experience. I think they two fit uh, will actually set us apart uh, relatively to our other competitors. Right. So you are saying. The things what you have done in the, with the AI in P90 are implemented in a much better way as compared to Kirin and Qualcomm. Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a unique and different way. Yeah, great. Okay, if you look at the market right now, and there's a general perception that MediaTek is doing a lot of follow-up thing, like whatever Kirin is doing, Qualcomm is doing, they're trying to cash them up, and but they're not taking a lead in anywhere. Yeah. Uh, do you think this perception is true? Well, I've, I actually disagree with that perception. Let mm -hmm. me just give you two very simple illustrations. Uh, example. I mean, two years ago, three years ago, we were the first one to come out with the architecture idea called Octa-Core. Right. Still record, right? Mm -hmm. I understand back to when people can be laughing about that, have different view of that, that say it's not necessary. But look right now, Octa-Core become an industry standard. So many people have followed Octa-Core. Likewise, nowadays we talk about APU. I believe actually this APU will be very important from the architecture perspective, and people will follow. So uh, I think just just two of out of many example. When you think about MediaTek, I mean MediaTek is really an innovative company. We always coming out with the good idea, new idea, and more importantly, we're trying to provide those features in a more accessible way to you know as many customers as possible. Do you have an answer for 855 Snapdragon 855 right now? Or it's in the well, something in well, making. I, I, I personally I didn't get all the de product detail yet, but I would rather probably just come back and focus on P90 because mm -hmm. I am actually more familiar with P90. Mm -hmm. Given the overall performance, given the AI uh, the architecture, APU architecture, and mm -hmm. more importantly, we put that AI into something called uh, the neural pilot. As you can see today, we got work with a lot of external, you know, IP vendors. Uh, actually, not IP vendors, a lot of the software vendors, the app vendors out there. We believe that actually it's, uh, this actually really uh, distinguishes a power from other competitors. Right. Uh, though uh, I would say you didn't give me clear answer about whether you have got a direct competitor to 855, but nevertheless, uh, if we look, uh, talk from the Indian perspective, we have seen that uh, most of the people who are coming with the MediaTek, they're using the MediaTek chipsets only for their entry level or mid level phones. Right. They're not doing much experiments. Yes, there have been a couple of them, but not many are using them in their high end flagship phones. Mm -hmm. Why is it so? Well, I think because in the past, right, we do start from the mainstream, mm -hmm. okay, like P90, for example, for last year. That's a very successful mainstream, mainstream form. Mm -hmm. But now with P90, especially with all those new features, we do believe we can actually get in something called the new premium sector, which is, uh, you know, from the smartphones uh, and pricing perspective will be uh, a higher notch compared to the P60. Right. Yeah. Uh, 
if you look at the uh, major thing like if you talk to the lot of OEMs they always say this functionality is not supported by the chipset we cannot do it we, and when we talk to the chipset guys they always say like we have given the functionality they have not deployed them in their phones that's the reason you are not getting it. So do you think there is a lack of uh, proper communication with the OEM and the chipset guys or the or the ch rules li uh, laid by the chipset guys when they say at least give this kind of communic uh, specs in our devices it will do wonders. But OEM guys don't refer, don't listen to the chipset manufacturers. Is it so? I probably will not frame this issue like this way. Okay, mm. uh, communication is one of the uh, one of the way we can improve that. But I think more importantly is whether or not, from the chipset vendor perspective, we can truly provide value and differentiating factor to the OEM guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe in the past some of the features the OEM guy say, okay. That looks good on paper, that looks good on um, the testing score, that looks good on the PP PowerPoint. But when it turned out, it become a real feature, whether or not they'll become uh, attractive features to the end customer. So <coughs> I guess this time around, why we actually have a, such a big demo on the P90s? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people tell us that's just the needed feature, that's the most wanted feature they want mm -hmm. on their phone. So I do believe this time around uh, will be different. Right. So, when is the first devices we can expect on the based on the P90? Uh, I think right now is we already <coughs> give the sample, the chipset sample to our customer already. Mm -hmm. Depends on the, what's the customer's final product roadmap uh, schedule, but most likely I would say probably end of Q1 or Q2. Uh, end of Q1, beginning of Q2. Right. Okay. There are a lot of, uh, back in India, there are a lot of people who are using uh, smartphones powered by MediaTek. If you want to give them a message that what can consumers in India look forward from MediaTek in 2019, what would that be? Well, first of all, AI and APU, mm -hmm. that will be the industry leader to mm -hmm. provide a lot of AI in both the function. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think in addition to AI, uh, rest in short, MediaTek will provide more and more innovation mm -hmm. basically to surprise all the customer. Right. And there's a lot of buzz going around the 5G. So what's MediaTek doing on that thing, on that front? Well, I think 5G definitely will be very important for MediaTek. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of announced that our first uh, 5G modem M70 will coming out mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. Actually, doing, maybe I can do a little bit preview here, say, uh, during the NWC next year, we're going to really demo our M70, mm -hmm. that the first uh, 5G modems. Mm -hmm. And rest in short, we're going to provide uh, more information, more than modems uh, during the NWC soon. Great. And if just uh, on one final question, like if you look at your competitors, Qualcomm, Kirin. Kirin is fast uh, going up the ladder and seems like MediaTek is stuck a bit. Is it so? Well, well again, so, so our view about competitions from maybe slightly different from your perspective. Our mm -hmm. view is actually is, uh, we're competing mainly with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because whether or not we can just provide different differentiation, whether or not we can come up with new ideas which will truly benefit to our customer, right. to our end customer. I think from that perspective, I think that's we always driving uh, the business development and also the product development. I think that's a key. Perfect. Thanks for your time, David. It was lovely talking to you. My so, pleasure. Friends, this was David's interview and uh, uh, interview definitely in English, but you will see the whole translation map that we are translating. You can see that from MediaTek, we have a lot of questions, but David didn't have time because we were in China in the P90 launch event and we had to catch a flight. We have a lot of questions that we will have to answer when we come to India and we are hoping that we will come to India in January. Then we will ask these other questions and then you will also write in the comment section what questions we will ask. We will ask questions, we will give you a answer, we will get a solution to you. So, till the next time we meet again, goodbye. Great, bye bye.